What up, fam? So I have every modular building. Was it worth it? So back in 2018, two modulars brought me out of my dark ages, the Parisian restaurant and Assembly Square. I technically used my son as an excuse to get these sets, telling myself that I would want to build these sets with them. He was one. Long story short, I was hooked and I wanted more. I purchased a few sets on Amazon, big mistake, discovered BrickLink, I quickly amassed every single modular building, brand new, except for the original trilogy. That is the Double C's, Cafe Corner, the Double G's, Green Grocer, and Market Street. All three currently worth brand new, around $6,143, that's USD. The Double C is going for $2,270, the Double G is going for $1,441, and Market Street going for $2,432, on average. Now used, around $4,307. Fortunately for me, I was able to pick up the Double C and G for around $300 each. Pricey at the time, definitely not bad now. However, Market Street being the last and most recent modular that I would have to pick up, yes, even after the Natural History Museum, did break my wallet for a little bit. I mean, like, why? This ended up being around $600 used when it originally retailed for $89.99. And to be fair, easier to part together than the double CNG, even though it was the cheapest modular to buy. I still spent more than I did for the double CNG getting Market Street. But some of you might not even consider Market Street to be a part of the modular line, since originally it was a part of Factory, where fans were allowed to use a program to be able to create their own sets, kind of like the predecessor to what would be now Studio. Designed by one of the first LEGO ambassadors, Eric Brock, who unfortunately passed away back in 2007 and never got to see his set on the shelf. So with this knowledge and unlike before, I truly appreciate the fan contribution associated with this set. But even Jamie Burrard, the godfather of the modular line itself, included the market street within his own mini modulars, which was just a decorative piece on his own desk before actually coming a set. Which leads to what do you consider to be a part of the modular line? Because according to Sans, you might know me from absolutely nothing. However, I am an expert when it comes to Lego modulars, which means I'm an expert in nothing, but that does mean I am the be all and end all when it comes to what is and is not a Lego modular. So anything not on this list I'm about to give you is not a modular. Excluding the nine mini modular sets, there are 42 distinct modulars that you can use to make your wholly unoriginal city. With me being the only expert in modularity, I'm gonna assume you know nothing, which is a pretty easy assumption to make, and break this down into four categories to make it slightly easier for you. The first group consists of 19 undisputed modulars. I know some people think that the Market Street one doesn't count, but that's just them lying to themselves because they can't afford it. Poor. <laughs> The modular adjacent group easily and comfortably fits right in with all the generic modulars, but getting them is a little bit less straightforward. Spring Lantern Festival was a limited retail release. Four of these come from the Bricklink Designer Program, which just means that they have lackluster designs. And the last three were pick a brick models, which means you could buy the brick separately and get the instructions separately, but you couldn't get it as a normal set, and you could only really get it from the pick a brick wall online at the time when these were released, and now it's not as easy because they might not have all the parts, even though you could part it. It's, it's it's, 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 it's stupid, but it's modular, which I guess could describe all of them, this, this whole thing. Oh, it's stupid. Foreign Cities is the next group, and they are modular. They fit most of the criteria, but they are a little bit of a different design scheme. So they're either on the other side of town or maybe another country. And this is the Marvel sets and all the Ninjago City sets. And with the final miscellaneous group, we have all the different gift with purchases or store builds. They're not modular buildings but they are modular because they came along with modular sets. It's, it's better if you just don't think about it and look at the pictures of all of them to see if you have a complete collection. And that, more or less, ladies and gentlemen, is the definitive be-all, end-all of every single modular. And if it's not on this list, then don't ask, because it's not a modular. Well, except for the inside tour modular, that's the same set, but just in a different box. Or the alternate build of that. Or so with that being said, I also lit it up. Sick, right? I mean, it looks so good lit up. Anyways, the original trilogy paved the way for the modular line. And thanks to Jamie Burrard, who helped pull the adult LEGO fan community in by acknowledging adult fans' ability to have discretionary spending. The Double C advertised the benefits in buying multiples so you can have larger versions of the hotel, only for telling what the a fan will be over a decade away. That is seen in today's inventory of expensive sets, the ability of fans buying multiples if need be, and creating these giant monstrosities of whatever money can buy. But that's another topic for another day. The original trilogy era laid the foundation of what modules will one day become. 
such as the dark bluish gray tiles with the light bluish gray border, light posts, modular enclosed floors, back alleyways, etc. The OT buildings themselves may appear rudimentary in comparison to today's modular building techniques, but with limited piece availability, simply genius. Sadly, some of the pieces make them near impossible to piece together due to the rarity in the aftermarket. But there's something charming about the OT. It may be the age, the building style, or even the techniques implemented with the parts usage. And with the current limited availability and how difficult it is to piece them together, there is a serious value in each set. And aside from the grocery store in the bottom of the double G, all three buildings had pretty much no interior. Yes, the fan was left to furnish the building on their own. I feel like the creative team had lower piece count parameters that kept the interiors from being built. Still though, all expensive to obtain. And luckily for me, aside from Market Street, all purchased at a relatively low price point, but none of them were the most expensive modules that I've ever purchased. That trophy belongs to the Town Hall. Now this set was only around for just under three years from March 2012 to December 2014, two years and 10 months, and is somehow hard to come by, mainly due to the shelf life. It sold for about $199.99 and is currently $854 brand new and $596 used. Um, brick set, I think you need to update this information. That is not what I've seen it out in the wild. Now, honestly, if you have a city or a town, this municipal building is a must have. Like, how are you gonna be able to govern your city without one? I mean, we do need more municipal buildings, such as a post office, a score, even a hospital. Because currently, I guess our minifigures are simply uneducated and die due to the lack of medical care. But at least we have a town hall to govern. I mean, where are those taxes going to? Living in California, I totally get it. Oh, we had the fire brigade to put out fires as well as the police station to keep order. So at least we have those in which the town hall and the fire brigade are a part of what I call the classics. This era included the fire brigade, the ground emporium, pet shop, town hall, and the palace cinema. Now, unlike the OT era, which takes inspiration from Dutch, Danish, and European-inspired architecture, the classic era took a different approach bearing towards a variation within the United States, each one having their own look and character with no real cohesiveness in the skyline. Now, the classic era definitely did have a significant evolution from the original trilogy time. Now, every building has clear back alleys and doorway access. All of them have spacious interiors that are appropriate to the build, with hints to a story that are more subtle, unlike our present-day modulars. But aside from the double Gs, like the OT, all have carpet and instead of tiles on the first floor. And by taking Town Hall out of the picture, still not that bad to purchase brand new or used, as they are currently still relatively easy to find. But then we have the modern era, starting with the Parisian restaurant, detective's office, brick bank, assembly square, downtown diner, corner garage, and bookshop. And at this time, the modules evolved significantly. The carpet base pits now all have tile flooring. The rooms and floors are no longer spacious, being significantly furnished with detail, which then in turn accessorizes the environment for the cast of characters and their story, which at this point becomes a huge highlight in the design and playability of each set. A proposal taking place in the Parisian restaurant, the cookie smuggling in the detective's office, which was influenced by the Lego team having to eat healthy in the workplace back in Denmark. The money laundry within the bank, which later continues storylines and Easter eggs seen in the police station and the laundromat with the brick bank. The music made from the rock artists from the downtown diner seen in the apartment of the corner garage, or even in the posters within the later boutique hotel having links to pretty much everything. But now the street block has been given depth and height. Modules can now have multiple buildings not associated within its own base plate, as seen in the detective's office and assembly square. Some may not even have the blockish facades as seen in the classics, such as the Parisian bookshop and diner. But even the diner and corner garage, which at the time were heavily criticized for diverting into a more 50s-centric look. But it starts with the Parisian restaurant, which in my opinion is Jamie's masterpiece. But this one, like the pet shop, sat on shelves forever. From January 2014 to December 2019. That's like six years, almost. But that means that the quantity available makes this one easily attainable. Currently new at $315 versus used at $250. And for what you're getting, does not hurt the wallet one bit. Now, the detective's office and the brick bank that were shortly released afterwards didn't last as long. The detective's office from January 2015 to December 2018, just under four years, and the brick bank from January 2016 to December 2018, just under three years, which both modules at the time were not cherished faves, but were hugely appreciated and sought after once retired, like all of them are. Especially because the brick bank was heavily referenced in the later police station, which the bank is currently going for $548 new and $429 used. And like the Parisian Assembly Square was left on a shelf from 2017 to 2023, just under five years. And why was this left on a shelf for so long? I mean, it makes sense. This one was the 10th anniversary of the modular series line and one of my personal favorites. I mean, if you could only get one modular, this would be the one. It paid homage to the original trilogy, 
And on its own, it's a city onto itself. It was huge, a base plate and a half, the first of its kind. And currently now going for around $248.32 new and $194 used. Brick set, that doesn't make sense. So, okay, all you really needed was any two corner modulars and your block is complete, which I guess promotes the idea of it being a filler modular. Filler modulars are modular buildings that lack main character energy. They're still beautiful buildings, they're great builds, but they're just not the main event. Which the bookshop completely falls into, right? But before this modular, the 50s became the center of the stage, the diner and the corner garage. Personally, at the time of the shelf life, I thought that they were unique and had great potential. The diner, which retailed for $169.99, is available new at around $290 and used around $250, with the garage retailing around $199.99, with a slight increase in value being new at $241 and used at $211. And with the diner comes with the loss of the traditional classic smiley face. And yes, I know the Market Street didn't have generic faces as well. Now each one comes with a personality that you can find in modern Lego sets. And I think the diner will be the one that will most likely be favored as the years progress. The facade itself completely standing out from the entire modular skyline with its color combination and rockability aesthetic, with the same uniqueness as seen in the Palace Cinema. The corner garage is super underrated. Now the bookshop. It's a bookshop. A similar half base plate ability also seen in the pet shop. I mean, it was due to have something like this again. We kind of need the more of the same kind of maneuverability to be able to split half base plates and just fill them in because like assembly square kind of makes everything off centered. But the difference between the pet shop and the bookshop is that one plays with height and the other one's just a block, which then leads to what I call the color palette. Starting with the police station, then the boutique hotel, the jazz club, and natural history museum. In this era, every modular building was challenged by the leg committee on the choice of colors used for each modular. All still following the evolution of previous eras, but with some challenging the use of right angles. As seen in the boutique hotel, which originally referenced the double C. Look, even the godfather of the modular line, James Berard, is referenced again in the boutique hotel. But now, the police station and jazz club using 32 by 32 base plates to house multiple buildings. This was either heavily appreciated or heavily criticized of the time of their announcements. But to me, I love how it truly changes the skyline for a more realistic approach using depth and height within one modular. Where the detective's office was a foreshadow of that. And with the police station attached to the jazz club and boutique hotel, provide a vibrant block in comparison to prior configurations of modular buildings. But then the Natural History Museum came out and simply smacked everything I mentioned earlier. The museum is a giant block with a very spacious interior, unlike the previous three within this era and all of the modern era, but the references to the overall leg community is truly appreciated in this exact build. So like previous years, where I ranked every single modular building, thanks to the help of Emily and Josh, this time around, it's going to quickly rank them. Number 19, the Market Street. Number 18, the Pet Shop. Number 17, Fire Brigade. Number 16, Grand Emporium. Number 15, the Bookshop. Number 14, National History Museum. Number 13, Corner Garage. Number 12, Town Hall. Number 11, Green Grocer. Number 10, Cafe Corner. Number 9, Detective's Office. Number 8, Brick Bank, number seven, Jazz Club, number six, Palace Cinema, number five, Boutique Hotel, number four, Assembly Square, number three, The Diner, number two, Police Station, and number one, The Parisian Restaurant. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Let me know where your ranking stand in the comments below. Now, all together, at the time of each modular's initial release, not the increased versions that LEGO upped the prices with a couple years back. These sets retail for $3,459.81, and as of yesterday, around $11,711 new and $6,974 used. So even if you were to have every module building out of the box, collecting dust on a shelf, worth almost doubled what you could have purchased it at retail. In the end, it comes to your own value. Would the modules bring you joy regardless of how you use them? Because for me, absolutely so is having every modular building worth it yes <laughs>